If we tell the dead to rise, then they will rise. Stop wasting the power. Until your reason is accomplished, the power has not been given to any devil to kill you. He whom the Son has set free is whatever God gives you is sufficient. Come on, for your assignment in life.
why you are blessed now is for you to bless others. You will not even be able to count the number of blessings you have in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm enjoying mine too. And the light of God is here in Jesus' name. Thank God that you have the grace to be a Nigerian on a day like this. The position you have is to bless humanity and glorify God. And if anything, that should be our prayers for all our leaders. By the grace of God, it's our month of, that is April, is, I don't say will be, is a month of covenant. If you stay till the end of the service, I'll tell you. Covenant restoration. In the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, you just said to me again to announce to somebody, he said the restoration you have been looking for all your life begins today. In the name of Jesus. Uh, 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 hey, I say it begins today. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. It begins today. Our first scripture is Joel chapter 2 from verse 25. So I will restore to you the years. It will restore to you. It will restore to your marriage. It will restore to your health. It will restore in your finances. It will restore in your family. Even extended. It will restore your nation. I will restore, said the Lord. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty. Yeah. Somebody is saying amen. Yeah. And in this same country that people are using their mouths to cast themselves, people will see you shine a star. Yeah. Woo! In the name of Jesus. What people don't know is that every blessing of God is still subject to your collaboration. Though it's finished. You create with your mouth your situation and your future. So you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. Somebody's wondrous journey is just starting in the name of Jesus. <laughs> hey! <laughs> uh, yes. Those who think they know you are in for a shock. In the name of Jesus. Those who think they know you and they can define your future. I said they are in for a shock. In the name of Jesus. I'm sure you're wondering why you have fought so much so many battles, and you're wondering, ah, are you the only one? It's because the devil is scared. In the name of Jesus. He says, and my people shall never be ashamed. Uh, never. 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 I say never. Hey! Never! I will never be ashamed. We will never be ashamed. In the name of Jesus, never. 27. Then you shall know that I, that is him, I am God. And I'm in the midst of Israel and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Jump with me to verse 
7. I'll read quickly from there. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. Uh, but they did not prevail. The dragon and his angels did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Who deceived the whole world. He was cast out. It was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. It was Jack Eford that made this comment, and I heard we were in a pastor's conference with him, and he said it clearly, and I said, wow, I never thought of it that way, although I've always known it. And what did he say? See, you can imagine the he I mean, heaven, the throne of God, where God, you can imagine rebellion in heaven. Wow. You can imagine envy and jealousy in heaven. Wow. You can imagine fight in heaven for power. Fight for control. So don't be surprised that when politics come, it's like a war. It's okay. It's, that's been the pattern. People like power. It's okay. And it's not limited to Nigeria. It's all over the world. But when we know, then we will have peace. And they tried to check this guy, and he refused. Then there was outright war. War broke out in heaven. War in heaven. But the dragon and his team did not prevail. And because they did not prevail, there was no more place for them in heaven. So they were cast out yeah, to the earth. This was what Jacopo said. He said, wait a minute. God cast that great dragon and these angels who were supporting him to the earth. And God created the earth and the whole, yeah, the whole earth. And he said, man, I give you dominion in the earth. He said, God created war. He said, man, you are in charge. And the devil that fought to upset God, to unseat God, God kicked him and he's here. He will fight you. So, tell your neighbor, it's war. Uh -uh. You think it's a joke? Tell your neighbor, say, it's war. Uh, if you don't believe it, then uh, <laughs> God will help you. Yeah. Say, so what do you expect? But see, the good news is here. So, it is, so the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan. So if you have any doubt, uh, we are talking about Satan himself. Serpent in the, in the garden. Satan himself. That's what we're talking about. And no occultic power can be greater than their, their, their papa. Call devil and Satan. Who deceives? Circulate. That's one of his strongest, one of his most potent tools. Who deceives the whole world? He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice. Saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come, have come because have cast him out. And for the accuser, circle that again. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been kicked out. And they overcame him how? By the blood of the Lamb. And the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Glory be to God in the highest. Now, quickly, because some always assume that you don't know what you are talking about. I do know. By the grace of God, I do know. For those who are interested in scholarly exercise, it's great. It will always help you. This is eschatology, which is the studies of prophecies into the future. So I understand the certain, but the methodology and the principles of Jesus Christ is the same, whether it's at the beginning of creation or at the end of the ages. So I want to bring out something for you to see this morning. I'm talking about the power in the blood of Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. 
As a matter of fact, if you know that you don't have a conviction in something and you put a front that this is what you're doing but you don't believe in it, then that's what is called hypocrisy. And what that does is that it hurts you first before it can hurt another person. So we live our lives by conviction and the main conviction in this house, in our lives, which we have in common, is that we believe in the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. We believe. That's our common ground. And that that blood is still effective today. That's what we believe. Now, many will not believe what we believe, but it doesn't matter. That they are living by their conviction. And we are living by our own convictions. Glory be to God. So they are authentic. We are authentic. More so in Jesus' name. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So what, is the, what are the principles here? The devil fights anything created. Because he is never satisfied. He will attack you. He will attack. If he attacked, if he, if he attacked God but never won, then what makes you think he will attack you? But the unfortunate thing is that he wasn't created that way. You want to read a little bit more of him, you see it shouted in, in prophecies of certain kings in Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14. And amazingly, from verse 14, verse 14, just read that. You see, it was son of the morning, but he chose what he will, he will be. The Bible said he made war in heaven, and we're made to see the tools that he used. And how did he get this? The Bible said one third of the angels in heaven. He was so effective. He was, he was an influencer. He affected angels. He affected creatures in heaven under the nose of God. So much so that one third of these mighty angels followed him. And how did he do that? By deceit. You read it. Did you read it? Did you see it? How did he do that? By accusation. So how? Example. Had God said that if you eat this, or that you... and by the time he continued to talk, he talked until the, the, the place where the lady now began to make light what God has said and made big what the devil is saying. Lies that leads to deceit, confusion, wrong decision. Then he turns around when you're like, hey, I want to move. He goes before God and says, who are you listening to? That one. And he accuses and accuses you so that God will be paralyzed from reaching out and helping you. And what effect does he have on you? Guilt. Because he's working on your condemnation before God. And how did they overcome? I'm just reading out this quickly. How did they overcome? We are not, not left out of that. By the blood of the Lamb. Oh, come on, is somebody hearing me? Somebody shout by the blood of the Lamb. Shout by the blood of the Lamb. Shout by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. And the word of their testimony, the words of their testimony, the words of their testimony, the words of their testimony. And then if there's a third one, and of course there is, and they did not love their lives unto death. The complete Jewish Bible puts it this way. The words, the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and even in the face of death, they didn't change the strategy of heaven. Blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. Even in the face of death. So people don't understand what it means that they didn't love their life. No, no. Let me tell you what happens usually. What is it? By the time you believe God, you believe God. At least you think you are believing God. You think you are believing God. You think you have done everything. And you know that you deserve more. Or you think that you deserve more. And you are pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray, pray. Then there are people that will come and tell you lies and say, turn to an alternative power. Hey! Whether you are looking for power, fame, money, or husband, or child, or whatever. Come on. Haven't they told you that before? And after a while, uh, what did they say in Yoruba? 
Uh, uh, uh. That is, see, they tell you so much lies until you begin to compromise your stand. But that's just by the way. So when they say, and they love not their lives unto death, that means that, look, 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 there is no compromise about this. They never compromise. They stood their ground. Even when it looked like the war will be won by the enemy, they stood with the blood and they stood with the word of their testimony until the devil. And I'm saying to someone here, the same strategy will put the devil on his back, in your case, in the name of Jesus. Don't give up at all. Don't compromise your stand. What you comp- what you get by compromise, you will lose by compromise. It's only what the Lord does that will stand permanent. No, it's true. Now, quickly, if you look at the Bible, you know, we look last Sunday, we'll make reference to that. Book of Genesis. <laughs> when man fell. Because man was not created like we found man later. Man was created in bliss, in dominion. Man was in control and was in charge. Man was walking the word of God. I mean, walking in the word of God, as it were. Were there challenges? We were not told so much. Probably there were. But you don't see challenges when you are walking in the light of his countenance. They are there, but they don't really distract you. They don't have the power to do that. They become powerful when distraction begins to happen, when lies begin to come in. That's when, when you begin to see lies and begin to consider. Have you read the book of James? So we are pulled away by a lost until. And what happened after the fall? When man saw that the fall came, what happened? He suddenly realized something of himself that he never, he never saw before. What was that? Another spirit took over. Can I be frank with you? And please, you may say your yes inwardly. I know you are a child of God. You are a Holy Ghost free person. Do you sometimes find yourself caught up with what is not expected of you? Or caught up in the thoughts of the things that are not expected of you? Can I quickly tell you about, about this? If you don't rebuke that thought, it will get you into that corner. Every, phew, I feel the fire. Every decision, every failure starts with a thought and a decision. Every, every failure. I don't want to go into details of that at all. But how was it solved? Man had no clue. Man was now taken over by fear. How do we define the change? Fear. The man that was confident, that was in control, that was, in jo- that was joyful, that was, I mean, he knew nothing else but perfect love, suddenly started running. He started fleeing. Fear took over. And so much that when he heard God, he fled in the garden. But God had to bring them close. But for them to even stand anywhere near God to hear God, God slaughtered the animal. He introduced what? Blood. Come on. Somebody hear me. Come on, talk to help me now. God introduced what? Blood. And we have been made to understand clearly from the word that without the shedding of blood, there is no, eh, yeah, no remission of sin, so there is no reconciliation. And there it was prophesying the Lamb of God that we come to restore all things. Everybody shout, blood of the Lamb. That, that was Genesis. When it was only created Adam and created Eve. Nobody had been born through the womb of a woman yet. Even then, blood of the Lamb. Then, the deceit of the devil. Then, the fall of man. Then, the power of the devil ruling man. Then, the fear taking over man. Then, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> A man could hear God and begin to see, chat his way back. Then, leave it. Come back to this one. This is when you're talking about eschatology. This is talking of the last seven years of this realm. Some say it's three and a half years. Anyhow, you take it. The last week of Daniel's prophecy. 
which God revealed to John. Revealed to Daniel, revealed to John. You know, these 69 years of that, 70 years in captivity, and then 69 years, and, and God explained it to Daniel. You see, the amazing thing is this, Daniel was a slave. Daniel had no right. But by the wisdom of God and the liberty that he carried from the inside, he had every right, even ruled the kings of the kings of the place. The last three years and a half years, or the last seven years, you see, this one, if I, it's the last three and a half years. Because these are, you read it now, the tribulation, those who have come through the tribulation. It's in the passage you read, if you read from verse 9 down. Those who are coming through the tribulation, those who will be getting born again after the rapture. That's not the time you want to be in the, uh, to be in the world or to be on earth. That's when we should not bear the mark of the beast, you are dead. <laughs> But some will dare. They will not love their lives to death. They will never compromise the blood of the Lamb, the word of the testimony, and the uh -uh, not loving that. They came through. So look at it. Whether at the beginning or at the very ending is the same setting and it is the same blood of the Lamb. Is somebody hearing me? What about now? Hebrews 12, for you have not come to the mountain that may be toys and that born with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempest and to the sound of trumpet and the voice of war so that those who heard it read that the world should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that was, that, I mean, what was commanded and if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be uh, stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sign that Moses said, I'm exceedingly afraid and trembling. Pause for a moment. Man, you don't make the mistake around. The, when God is on the mountain, he came down as far as standing on the mountain. You don't make the mistake and touch the mountain. It's death. But today, I'm jumping, you know. When God comes, we embrace him. Yeah. Fear rule. Look at verse 22. But you have come. Please, sir, ma. You saw it in Genesis. You saw it from the Bible. What the future, how it will all end. I'm talking to you now about now. Somebody say now. now. But you have come to what? Mount Zion. To the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. To an innumerable company of angels. Glory be to God in the highest. Yes. To the general assembly of the church of the firstborn. Who were raised in heaven. To God the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. Yes. Uh, to Jesus. Hallelujah. The mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling. That speaks better things than that of Abel. Praise the Lord. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, sir. But wait a minute. He said, you've come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks, sir. He now says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks, sir. For they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth. Sir. Much more shall we. Praise So that's it. So now the blood speaks, sir. Now, you see where we have come. We have not come to that place where we are, we are, we are ruled by fear. We don't come to that place where... In other words, Jesus has died and resurrected. God is not that separate. In fact, he's not separated at all from us anymore. The paternal wall has been removed. God has come out in the open to us in an embrace, as it were. We are no more slaves in the name of Jesus. We are children of the Most High God. Is somebody hearing me? You are a son in the house of God. He loves you with perfect love in the name of Jesus. And the truth is this. God will not love you better next year than he is loving you today. God has given, he has unleashed the best he has for you. Pastor, if only you know what I'm going through. It's not what you are going through. It's how much of the love you don't understand that you are ready to appropriate. That's all. There's no room for self-pity. Somebody said, God has no grandchildren. No, he has no great-grandchildren. No. Pastor is a child of God. And we are pastor's children. Agreed. But you are as much a child of God as pastor is a child of God. There's no second, there's, there's, there's no second wrong of relationship. He doesn't have great-grandchildren. As Jesus is the son of God, so you are. It's up to you. Don't believe a lie of the devil. 
that will come and make you compromise who you are. You are in a good stand. You are working a good work. It can only get better in the name of Jesus. Is somebody hearing me? Stop it in yourself! That sometimes in my life I wonder, I, start, I see nobody, there are a thousand and one people working on rubbish. That's self pity. If God be for you, I said, I'd say, everybody can fall into that trap. You say, really? Honest, I'm exaggerating. Even that dear boy, dear boy. He stands like I'm telling you to stand. That's the way he stands. That's why he's where he is today. Go and ask Trump. Or Buhari. No, leave them. Ask Koshibajo. He's your brother. You tell her that place can be dangerously lonely. If you are not careful, you begin to pity yourself, and that the devil will deal with you. Not you. I say not you. In the name of Jesus. Is somebody hearing me? Glory be to God in the highest. You know, I said, This is where you have come. Have you ever read it before? Let me remind you quickly. God has not given me the spirit of what? Bed of what? Of what? Love. Power, love, and the sound, man. That's, how, that's why you can't be defeated. If you cannot be deceived, you can't be defeated. So don't take what he hasn't given you. And when you say God has given you love, that's why perfect love casts what? If you believe in the love I have for you, you will never be afraid I can hurt you. Why did children and wife's fire become so terrible? The same way they were magneted, they now suspect each other. They have become cynical of each other. They can't trust anything of, the, of each other anymore. They can't even trust God in the life of their husband or wives anymore. That's how much the devil can destroy a man or woman. Deceit, lie, and accusation. But by the blood of the Lamb. You say, why the blood? Can't you see? He used the blood there. He's using the blood here too. Hebrews 13.20 See, the whole idea is for you to have an understanding and make your decisions. Church is good. We lay hands on you. Yeah. What when we are not there? In the kingdom, seeds are always planted and is allowed to grow. Which seed is growing if all you do is always somebody must? Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through, everybody shout, through the blood. Again, again, again. That's why it's operating now, through the blood, through the blood, through the blood, again, through the blood, through the blood of the everlasting, through the blood, yeah, yeah, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, then do what? Make you. God can't do anything with you or through you, by you, except through the blood. Make you, you know, make you complete in every good work to do his will. You want to do his will? Working in you what is well pleasing inside. You want what you, what you do to be well pleasing. It's through the blood. It's through the blood. And then say, through the blood, see how you know, through Jesus Christ. Through the blood, make you through Jesus Christ. Do you learn anything from there? Please, let me put the first one quickly. I want you to read something. Let me read this. This is uh, Jack Hayford. Let me read. He said, pleading the blood of Jesus is a heaven-given resource that grants us a license to stand in dominion over the works of hell. Somebody shout, the blood of Jesus. Aha. We can use it in the same sense that an attorney stands before the court and makes a plea on legal grounds based upon a body of evidence. There is no circumstance in life to which the blood of Jesus isn't key to God's releasing, protecting, resolving power, whether it's removing the potential of confusion, overcoming the impact of rebellion, breaking the torment of fear, or the shame of the past. When we plead the blood of Jesus, we are to do so in the, un in an underst or in the understanding sense uh, with the fire power of the supernatural. And on the basis of the body of evidence that through the blood of Jesus Christ, all hell has been broken in its power. 
All things neutralized. The power of death overwhelmed. And every human need paid for. There is nothing you cannot access. The key is the blood of Jesus. You know, somebody was asking what is as a living conscious of the blood of Jesus. That's what I'm talking about today. What I want to achieve with this, living conscious. And number two, consciously, constantly activating the power in the blood. Give me the second one quickly. This is Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth and Greg Copeland. Pleading the blood is actually a legal term. Can you see it again? Huh. Think of it like a lawyer pleading his case before the judge. He presents evidence and facts to support his case. We have examples of this term in the Old Testament. He quoted some things. When the accuser says we are guilty, our plea before God, the righteous judge, is the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. He changes, or I change everything. The blood of Jesus established a new and better covenant between us and the holy God. The blood is our defense. It, de it, it declares we are not guilty but free from all penalties of sin. The blood also gives us the authority and dominion to resist Satan and put him out of all the affairs of our lives and of our families, family lives. Because of Jesus' sacrifice at Calvary, the devil has no legal right. He's a trespasser. To interfere in our lives anymore. He says we are guilty. We plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, yeah. We have every right and provision to walk in victory through the precious blood of the Lamb. Every day you have the right to exercise the authority by what? Pleading, hallelujah. What the blood of Jesus has done for you. Refuse to give the enemy even one small inch of territory. Satan is a defeated foe. And through the precious blood of Jesus, we are victorious. Give me the last one by Spurgeon. Many keys fit many locks. But the master key is the blood. So I'm not just backing. It's the blood and the name of him that died and rose again and ever lives in heaven to save unto the uttermost. The blood of Christ is that which unlocks the treasure of heaven. Plead the blood. Come on, tell somebody, say, plead the blood. Yeah. Say it again, plead the blood. Yeah. No matter how small, no matter how great, no matter how impossible, in the name of Jesus, plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the cross. Sing of the precious blood of Jesus. Recite the scriptures and enforce the victory over the power of darkness. Plead the blood over and over again. Agree with Christ's self and cry. It is Yes, we have been given the very powerful weapon of warfare. Consider this weapons, the cross, the word of God, the power of the spirit, the name of Jesus, and the blood which speaks. Mess. Mess. What does the blood say? When the devil tells me something, the blood says, hey, tell you, there is therefore now no condemnation. The devil says, say, you are, you are, you are. I say, say but you, you, there's no condemnation. The blood is speaking. And what do you do? Speak what the blood speaks. Don't say what the devil is saying or what they are saying. What does the blood say? You are free. Galatians 5.1. What does the blood say? You are justified. <laughs> Romans 5.9. What does the blood say? You are forgiven. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1.4. What does the blood say? You are healed. Come on. Don't say what they are saying. Say what God has done. Declare the first word of, of, of the Lord. Activate your... Come on. Your arsenal of blessings. I am righteous. First Corinthians 5.21. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have not been given the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1.7. I will have boldness with access and confidence. Ephesians 3.18, I can go on. So the blood is ever speaking. What he ever says is the finished work of Christ. And what should you say? You say what he has said. One person said that they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the declaration of the finished work of Christ. Shabbat.